Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here with Retire Different. This is the place for people who want to ask the right questions in order to plan for a fabulous retirement. And I've got some guests today that are going to talk about uh, something that's quite controversial in the way that we look at retirement savings versus income. And uh, I want to introduce first to you Pam Kruger. Pam is a financial and investing expert. She is the co-host of PBS Money Track and is an author, TV personality. Uh, she is also the creator of Wealth Ramp, which is an online tool that uh, helps fiduciary advisors connect with consumers like you. So it's a great uh, tool for people. Hi, Pam. Welcome. Hi, Margaret. This, this one requires a fresh cup of tea. Oh, well, <laughs> it's, it is fire me. Oh, I've got my tea too. <laughs> and, the, and I love that beautiful cup. It's got owls on it and animals. Yeah. It's a nature mug. It's lovely. It's got like mythological creatures. Maybe that's why the money connection. But you know, here's the, here's the thing. We're going to talk about this whole thing about savings and income, but I want to introduce someone who's going to really help us bring it to the real world. And that's Ellen Duffy. Now, Ellen is a certified financial planner in Massachusetts. She's the owner of Parkway Wealth Management, which is an independent wealth management firm. And she offers independent and unbiased advice, uh, both financial and investment. And I love the fact that she's very human about the way she approaches the conversation on money. So it's wonderful to have you here, Ellen. Oh, thank you so much, Margaret. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you. Well, you know, money is a pretty emotional topic. Uh, and for, it doesn't matter whether you're in retirement or thinking about it. But one thing that um, we've been thinking about a little bit lately is, ver you know, we all focus on savings for retirement. You know, like I've saved all my life. I've put a month's time money for savings. But what about the, um, the importance of supplementing your income and, and to focus on that too? So do you want to start with that, Pam? Yeah. So, you know, our whole lives when we start working, our very first job, 401k, yeah. um, you know, start to save toward a savings goal a critical mass amount of money that one day is going to amount to a big pile of money. It's going to be a million dollars or it's going to be $2 million. And, and when we have that big pile of money and we arrive at that destination, we'll somehow just know <laughs> we can retire. <laughs> it's going to retire. And that's the way we're going to live happily ever. After. And the reality is, is that the closer and closer and closer and closer you get, to that point of having whatever savings number it is, it might be 50,000, it might be 25,000, or it might be 2 million. Whatever that number may be, you've got to stop thinking about it in terms of a big chunk of money and start thinking about it in terms of what does that equate to in monthly income to help me That's cover my bills and live my life. Yeah. So basically you have this money in savings. How, what, how are you going to get it out and right. out to the, in the way that's going to sustain the lifestyle that you are maybe equating with the million dollars rather than the 2000 a month that you can actually pull from that, that savings. So Ellen, you face this conversation all the time. What do you think are the biggest mistakes that people make when they think about savings versus income? Well, I think it's, it's, um, it's an interesting conversation. I think when you think about approaching retirement and drawing income, you firstly want to have just a really intimate understanding of your baseline profile, right, Margaret? So that means you want to understand what your income needs are, what are we solving for, what are we trying to get into your bank account every month, okay? So that's a function of doing some homework on your budget, on what you spend, and also doing some homework on what assets you have, how much you've accumulated anyway for retirement, understanding if there will be some pension income or some rental income. Pam referred earlier in another conversation to Airbnb mm -hmm. income. Mm -hmm. Some folks will be retiring. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Some folks will be working part-time during retirement. So there's a lot of different uh, sources to evaluate and understand. Once we solve for that income puzzle, you, you're going to take your savings and convert that to income. And that's a strategy where you have an investment strategy, you have a drawdown rate where you'll be withdrawing income monthly or quarterly, and you'll be investing hopefully over the long term to have a sustainable drawdown rate. Right. The way that we draw income really is a simple function of setting up a distribution strategy from your accounts. And that sounds complex, but it really means understanding how much you can say if you pull out and depositing into your bank account every month like a job. Right. I you know, like a salary. Yeah. yeah. You know how sometimes I think of it? You made me you made me visualize this because it's so super simple yeah. to visualize it this way. Yeah. Let's just say you had this huge tub of water. Right. Filled with water. That's your savings. And then 
you want to start to turn the spigots underneath the tub so that it dripples and drips into different buckets. Those buckets are your distributions. In other words, you're gonna have a bucket of money that's gonna be for cash, right? That you need, this is super simple. I didn't just make this up. This is all, all over the place. But the idea is it's super simple. Out of your savings to turn it into income, one bucket has to be money I need right now. I need to go to lunch today. I need to figure out you know, my, my bills that I need to pay this month. And the other bucket is gonna be a bucket of money that you don't need today, but you can't afford to invest it forever. You need to kind of really have access to it maybe in the next two to five years. And then the third bucket you might think of as money from your savings that can be invested that you need to have it earn enough interest income so that it helps supplement Right. Does that make sense? It's like three buckets from a big tub of water. Your big tub of water are your savings and the little buckets are your distributions. And that is the transition from savings into income. I think that's a really good way of looking at it. And I think the challenge there, of course, is that people don't think realistically about the buckets. And mm -hmm. um, in fact, one of our, our, our bloggers actually wrote an article about um, doing a practice retirement you know, like even just like six months or if you could do it for a year, live on what you know is going to be needed in those little buckets, um, especially the cash budget. Maybe that's the most important one, what your rent is going to be, what your expenses are going to be, and you know, living below your means to test out what retirement is going to be, be like. But now that I think the, the distribution model, I mean, just it's, it's like, okay, how do you, um, how do you take what you, okay, if you don't have a lot of money, how do you still do this kind of, this modeling of income versus savings? Isn't it in a way make you feel good? Or doesn't it make you feel better that if you haven't got a lot of savings, income is going to cover for you there if you can get a part-time job or rent an Airbnb room? That it's an option if you haven't saved a lot? To be focused on income as opposed to yes. worrying about savings. I think so. I think through, through we, we've talked about kind of understanding your financial profile and sometimes the numbers, Margaret, just don't work. I can tell you a real life story where I met with clients a few months ago and they came into the office. He's still working. He's in his mid sixties. He wants to retire. They've refinanced the house. They have very little equity. Um, come to find out one person has run up their credit cards, unbeknownst to the other, there's not a lot of savings. So, you know, we talk about moving forward in that kind of scenario. And, and we talk about instances of deferring social security, holding off because social security is gonna be a really big part of their financial well-being. In this particular case, this particular client stated that he has a son that lives out of state and it's entirely more affordable and he is very comfortable leaving the community that he's in. So their retirement plan, a big possibility is leaving the state and moving to a more affordable area and kind of co-creating a new retirement lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about test running or, or, or stress testing your retirement, that's exactly what we kind of do in offices like mine. We stress test retirement spending. We could do projections that kind of tell us how are we looking? Are we in good shape or do we need to supplement? Do we need to keep working? And kind of taking the facts or the models and moving forward with whatever that means for each right, person. Right, and right, sometimes right. it means deferring retirement. Sometimes it means really changing their belief system about retirement, yeah. but finding the positives and, and right. moving forward and creating a plan. And colonizing. I have a question for you on that yeah. client. Just this yeah. person who you met with this. Okay. My question is, did you say 65? They're approaching 65. Yeah. Okay. So stop right there just for a second. You guys yeah. 65, everybody thinks ding, 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 ding. Oh, we're supposed to be in a position to be able to retire now. Therefore, we need to be able to figure out how to transition to retirement and stop thinking about savings and start thinking about income and et cetera. When really, really, Ellen, that couple, it doesn't sound like they can afford to stop working. And frankly, why would you stop working at 65? You know? Right. 
Well, you're, you're exactly right, Pam. And people are healthy and vibrant. I mean, look at some of the people in our political arena running for office in their late 70s, full mind, body, spirit capable. In this particular case, um, it's very hard work, this particular occupation. So I think there will have to be some creative thinking about continuing to drive income, maybe an alternative occupation. But sure. you're exactly right. I mean, you know, we're living longer than ever before. Some people spend more time in retirement if they retire in their early 60s than if they spend working, right? So it's really quite a proposition. I think um, when you approach retirement, I think it's about controlling what you can. And as I mentioned, some people may be forced out due to restructuring or, you know, career changes. Um, but being creative and thoughtful and creative about other ways to drive income. You know, we talked about Airbnb. Margaret mentioned a, a friend who is going to begin with window boxes. And you mentioned window boxes in a previous conversation that turned into quite a Sorry, business. Man. Women entrepreneurs are starting more and more businesses every day. So I think it's about being creative and thinking about ways to drive income to kind of supplement. And, right. and you and might end up doing something that you love. I mean, this is another right. beautiful part about retirement in quotes or pl pl planning for retirement is if you transition from a job that you maybe have done, you know, done your 30 years or 40 years or whatever, you might now want to start a job doing something that you really, really love. And I think what you said, the pen was so true that people get into the 65 mindset and it's that what they've been told that you get your social security at 62 or whatever, as soon as you can, you settle back and relax and you don't. You shouldn't have to be working after 62 or 63. The age, the age 65 changed. equating to a retirement age is ridiculous, yeah. right? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Sure, if you've got the money and you can live the next 30 years of your life without working, good for you. Hey, number one, I don't know why you want to do that. You know, that whole system was designed way back in the 30s when people were going to live to be 70. Right. So they were going to be in retirement for how long? Five years. Yeah. Now we're retiring for 25 years. No wonder we can't fund it. How are we going to fund 25 years? But the thing that I want to do is go back, Margaret, to your point in wanting the title of this video and the mm. subject of this video to be about thinking about income versus. And, and, and versus just a big chunk of savings. Right. So it's a visualization. It's mm -hmm. recognizing that it's real hard for, the, for your mind to wrap around. What does $500,000 buy me? in retirement lifestyle. That's a very difficult thing to think of. So breaking it down into those pieces, those distribution, those buckets, those sources of income, thinking of it in terms of what really do I need every single month in terms of income? That is what matters. Mm -hmm. And it's being honest. It's being honest about your expectations for your lifestyle and being prepared perhaps to make some co compromises. So like, you, like we said earlier though, that 500,000 in savings now, I, I think you said 5% drawdown or something. So 5% of 500,000. 4%. Well, 4%. 4 or 5%. There's a range of 4 or 5. Yep. That, is that 2,000 a month for some 25,000? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not, it's, I mean, that actually, of course, that's the social security. If you're supposed to, if you've got social security on top, that's 4,000 and that's probably quite a manageable. Um, but, but to be dependent on that kind of level when you could work, earn $1,000 a month. And that would be the equivalent of 200,000 plus in savings. You know, because you have access to it, it's right there. You're earning it every month. That's the mental connection. Yeah, but I, I don't think a lot of people make because that connection. That is worth stopping and, and just picturing that. Yeah. that right. Oh my God, if I just work, and it's not even work. I actually like doing this quasi-volunteer stuff I do. And, and I get paid $1,000 a month to show up and do it. And that $1,000 a month, holy cow, you know, is the equivalent of having that extra, um, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars in, in savings. So it helps you start to get the relationship between the yeah. amount you've saved in your suitcase compared to unpacking the suitcase and turning it into fluid income. But so what is it about us? Yeah. But what is it about us that once like 200,000 just sounds like a lot of money, like, like as if that's going to somehow, I guess I could always get it if I wanted to, or I could, but it, it, the psychology is like, it is not evolved with the reality of our, our culture and our, our, our time. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, we, we, we've just been trained that way. We've been trained to look ahead, look ahead, look ahead. And then it seems like when we get to retirement, Alan, I think you'll agree with this. All the books that are written out there, 
we have one more book about retirement. I'm going to, I'm going to split. <laughs> um, I'm thinking about writing one though. But let's, <laughs> let's but you actually should books, do, you should. <laughs> I have an idea for a, for a good book, but um, everything is look back. It's always like look forward and then ding dong, then you move and then you're supposed back. to look back. Yeah. Like as if you're crossing over this magic, you know, flip a switch and then you're, you're looking forward and then some, suddenly you're looking back and it's like, mm -hmm. When those yeah. books are written and those, those things are written about how much money you will have needed to have saved in order to be able to retire, um, if you had just stopped now at age 60-ish, 70, and you say, or 55, and you say, what is my income going to need to be to fund a typical month where I see myself kicking back, not working as hard? What does that mean? Not that I have to yeah. cover every month look like. That's yeah. income. That's where it's at. Income's where it's right. at. Well, and in fact, if you look at the uh, Retire Different website, you'll see all kinds of articles because we actually try to make the site really practical. Like the articles are very things you can do. So for example, Airbnb, we talked about if you want to rent a room in your house, you can rent your car now. You can rent your parking space. If you live in a, a town where they have a festival every year, you can rent your car parking space. And um, <laughs> the thing that's it. beautiful is there's technology now. There's companies yep. that have set themselves up. I mean, with the uh, renting your car, people sometimes say, oh, I'd never want to rent my car, it's my baby. But then if you've got two cars, you can rent one of them and they cover the insurance. They, you know, it's, it's, it's just another business. And there's so many of these now that you can task rabbit and uh, the freelance sites like, um, is it, e e not Elance anymore, it's Outwork or Upwork. You know, you can take the te the skills that you've you know nurtured over the yeah. years and make yeah, money maybe from maybe them. maybe you're a graphic artist. You know, maybe you okay. have that capability, or maybe you want to tap into that because you've been working in one role and you really have a creative side. And the internet will allow you to you know even on a small scale. All of a sudden, you say, "I'm selling something on Etsy." My brother-in-law started to make these. He takes conch shells in in the Caribbean. And he makes these beautiful like horns out of them and then pieces of jewelry, et cetera. Okay. So, you know, he didn't really think that was going to be a business per se, but guess what? <laughs> he's bringing in yeah. income every month and he's, it's a joy. It's just a joy. Do you agree with that, Ellen? I do. I do. And it's funny when Margaret opened up with one of her questions as to what is um, one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make and you know, on the practical side, you say things like, you know, pulling social security too early or not having saved enough or not really understanding their financial life and, and kind of being in the dark about some of the decision making. But uh, from a more philosophical point of view, I have to say, Pam and Margaret, I meet people all the time that hate their job. Yeah. Yep. They hate I the work. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it just makes you feel so bad because, you know, we have to enjoy our lives. You have to have fun with your life. And of course there's retirement planning and there's practical and pragmatic approaches and we all have income needs, but to spend 10, 15, 20, 25 years in a job that you hate, real, you know, it's just very discouraging. So you hear about people reinventing themselves and starting their businesses and really living their true passion. And sometimes that requires foregoing the stability and the security of a nice income stream my friend refers to it as the beauty of the W-2. <laughs> you know, you give that up. Yeah. But um, there are other benefits to just bringing joy and happiness and balance, passion into your life. So financial planning is like part art and part science, and it's about freedom and choices and yeah. really taking the time to understand how you want to live your life and what is, you know, truly yeah. doable. You know, I, I was actually just going to say really quickly that, you know, people hearing this, watching this might be thinking, wait a minute, this isn't a conversation about, I was just thinking this isn't that. a conversation about <laughs> high finance. Well, I got news for you. It's all smoke and mirrors. The conversations about investments are about investments. We can have that conversation in five minutes because mm. the fact is, is we can't even talk about your investments until we talk about this first. Yeah. And then once we get this part straightened out, we can spend five minutes understanding stocks, bonds, cash, real estate, and where your money can be, can be uh, invested. A lot of people, Ellen, uh, even people my age, your age, they come to us and they think that we're magicians. Like, oh, I need more money for my retirement. I need more income in retirement. So therefore, if I come to you, 
surely there's an investment out there that can give me more income. I just need to know about it. Well, if you just needed to know about it, everybody would know about it. It doesn't <laughs> exist. Everybody's doing the same thing. We're all trying to keep our money as safe as we can. We're trying to earn as much as we can. The conversation does turn to investing, but first it's this conversation. Yeah, and I think as you get to, sorry. And I think as you get closer to retirement and you get into your 60s and 70s, you there's another element there, which is you just feel like you deserve to be happy. Like you need to, you need to be doing something in your life that is happy. And, and many women are prepared to go down with the possessions they've got, to downsize, to have less, to, to reduce their income. And it's something you don't think about in those days that you mentioned, Pam, at the beginning of your work career where you're saving and you know, you've got big dreams. The reality yes. of life in retirement might be very, a little bit more frugal than you expected. Mm -hmm. But what well, the key thing is if you like to walk dogs, that's what you should be doing. You know, I live, I, I live in a one bedroom house. Yeah. This house yeah. you see here behind me is a one bedroom house, but this one bedroom house is on Cape Cod. Yeah. And I am one mile to the beach. Yeah. This house was not That's your choice. Anymore. You've chosen that. You could be in a bigger place because somewhere else. At the end of my day, I work my butt off. And at the end of my day, I want to get on my bike and I want to ride to the beach. Yeah. So it's the idea of, it doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be, I mean, I have a lot of friends, you guys who have houses 10 times the size of this. Mm -hmm. And I do not aspire to have that big empty roomed house. Yeah. I found my way with a one bedroom house. Yeah. Do I look unhappy? I'm happy. <laughs> but, I, I, but I think what you're saying here, we can kind of pull this all together, I think, is that what you've just said is exactly the whole point of this, is you don't have to worry in retirement about having a pile of money. All you have to do is move your lifestyle to what's realistic, given that, like Ellen has so, so repeatedly said about this honest uh, look at your situation and planning, and then just finding ways to make enough money to sustain that. That income. Not, that income, that income. And if you've got some savings, that's great. But that's, mm -hmm. in a, well, I guess the point of this whole conversation is it's not the most important thing. That's right. So I think, we've, I think we've covered a lot of territory here. I think this has been, I hope that you found this useful. I'm, I'm looking at the camera and saying to people, are you, are you finding this useful? Is this, are these the questions that you're asking yourself? Is this the kind of, is this surprised you, this conversation about income versus savings? You know, leave your comments in the section below and let's chat. And um, Pam's website is wealthramp.com. And Ellen's is, and I'm going to get this wrong, Ellen. So it's parkwaywealth.net. Got it right. Yeah, parkwaywealth.net. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> My memory isn't fading as I thought it was. No, but that's great. And I really do appreciate your, the humanity that you put into this conversation. So thank you. I'm sure you've touched a lot of people. So thanks a lot. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our Retire Different YouTube channel and check out our website at retiredifferent.com. We are a community of people who are asking questions and trying to make good financial decisions so that we can have an amazing retirement. We'll be looking at our relationship to money and also places that we can go for support, advice and inspiration.